on a bright Sunday morning in Portland earlier this month. This is somebody that donated their body to science. A few dozen people spent the day inside at this downtown hotel. They paid up to $500 a seat in the ballroom to sit up close to the mysterious figure draped in a white sheet. Heard about it through a friend, decided to broaden my experiences. The sheet comes off, exposing the corpse of an 86-year-old man. This in-person pay-per-view event puts regular people, paying customers, within an arm's length of something usually reserved for doctors and scientists. Definitely. Yeah. Yep, once in a lifetime experience. So. Colin Henderson, a retired anatomy professor from Montana, draws a knife and class is in session. Over the next three hours, our hidden camera records the dissection and removal of various body parts, all much too graphic for TV. It's a totally different experience to see the human body in person like that. At times, the professor encourages attendees to don rubber gloves and file by to poke and prod the body. It very educational. Um, it was they was very respectful to, you know, the the person that donated their body. They're not, you know, doing anything that I would if it was my own family member that I would be upset about. Um, so I think it's very well done. This autopsy was part of the Oddities and Curiosities Expo weekend in Portland, and not everyone is a fan. I was appalled, um, worried and very concerned. Kimberly DeLeo, Multnomah County's chief medical death investigator, got a tip about the cadaver lab, just like we did from a viewer. She got the event canceled with a call to one hotel. They were initially told that the event was for medical equipment training, and once they found out and discovered the website, she immediately canceled the event. But it moved to the waterfront Marriott, which refused to cancel, according to DeLeo. Hosting an event in a pay-per-view manner for a body donor who likely didn't consent to this is completely immoral and unethical. In a statement, the general manager for the Portland Waterfront Marriott said, we follow detailed protocols to protect safety and comply with applicable laws. He said the company is looking into the matter, but we do not discuss details of guests or groups. Professor Henderson referred our questions to the show's organizer, this man. He's the brains behind the body show, Jeremy Siliberto of Pennsylvania. Some people would say, that's gruesome. Why are you doing it? Death as a topic across America has been su such tremendously stigmatized. We have our professional staff guiding the students through, uh, whether it's the musculature on the arms, whether it's the internal organs, whether it's the brain, whether it's the, the limbs. Uh, we just explore the body and it gives a completely brand new perspective. Imagine learning from a real human cadaver. Siliberto is a TikTok host with a million followers, an amateur filmmaker and artist whose works are crafted with replica human bones. From big catacomb walls to simply a single skull wall mount. Just ballpark for me what you pay for a human cadaver for this kind of, for this kind of class. Yeah, we pay, this is not a profitable event by any means. Yeah, I mean, but, but just generally, where, how much does that cadaver cost you for an event like that? Uh, that's something in the invoices with the cadaver lab, that's, that's something. Is it north or south of $10,000? Uh, north, it, it's, yeah. And here's the body broker. Siliberto says he purchased cadavers from Las Vegas-based MedEd Labs, a for-profit company that tells donors or their families that their bodies will be used for medical research and education. Is this really for science or is this for a public curiosity? No, this was for science, like I mentioned. Jeremy, I, I want to be crystal clear about this point. Did that man or his family know that he would be part of an event where tickets were sold to the public and he would be on public view? Did he know that? Yes, that was, that was in the contract. Can you guarantee they had knowledge that he knew that his body would be used in this way? I can guarantee that he knew his body would be used for um, medical education. In later emails, Siliberto said it was up to the lab to obtain that consent. MedEd Labs has not returned our calls, but told the medical examiner this. Their supervisor was unaware of the deceased being used for this event. That would mean that the man on the autopsy table or his family didn't know he would end up here. 
our photojournalist noticed a medical-type bracelet on the man's wrist with the name David Saunders. We searched this national database of death records and online obituaries, but couldn't find an 86-year-old David Saunders who died recently. We've also been unable to confirm that the information on that medical bracelet is in fact the man's name. The medical examiner is also trying to confirm the man's identity and speak to his next of kin. I think that we need to take a look to see if this does not violate a current law. We need to have a law in place where this doesn't happen again. But. When we interviewed Siliberto, he planned to bring live autopsies to more paying customers. We're looking at more locations across the United States in 2022 because it allows the students to explore the body in a much more intimate way. I had a brother. Just one? Uh-huh. And he got killed during the war. This is military veteran David Saunders, interviewed by the National World War II Museum in Louisiana before he died in August of this year. But it's what happened after his death that some people consider an atrocity. It makes me really feel saddened that this gentleman was not given the dignity and the respect that he deserved and what he thought and his family thought that would be happening to his body. Funeral director Mike Clark of Baton Rouge handled the preparation of Mr. Saunders' body as it was handed off to a private company that his family thought would use his corpse for medical research. This is somebody that donated their body to science. Instead, Mr. Saunders ended up in this Portland Marriott ballroom, the centerpiece of an autopsy and dissection before a live paying audience, an event that we exposed in a story last week. Word of the story reached a group of Louisiana funeral directors this week who notified Mike Clark. What did you think? I was totally horrified. Our whole staff was horrified that this is what had happened to a gentleman that he and his family thought that his body was going for the advancement of medical students. Clark said MedEd Labs, a Las Vegas company that solicits body donations purportedly for medical and science research, never told him or the family that Mr. Saunders' remains would be used in such a manner. We have ceased all work with MedEd Labs. Jeremy, I, I want to be crystal clear about this point. Did that man or his family know that he would be part of an event where tickets were sold to the public and he would be on public view? Did he know that? Yes, that was, that was in the contract. But the event's organizer, Jeremy Siliberto, told us in an interview that aired last week that the donor and his family did give consent. I can guarantee that he knew his body would be used for um, medical education. There's another disturbing piece of information about what happened in this hotel ballroom. David Saunders, who lived to age 98, died of COVID according to his death certificate, meaning a potentially infectious body was dissected at this event in which people were invited to examine and touch the body. So what do you think, we have a man who died from COVID who's in a hotel ballroom being autopsied. What do you think about that? I think it is beyond imagination. It is not conceivable that this would happen to him. He's on display uh, somehow. It's, uh, I just don't have the words yet to describe how horrible I think it is. Oh, I think it's reprehensible. I think um, that this, they using my husband's body like he's a performing bear or something. That's Elsie Saunders on the phone from Baton Rouge, reacting after she learned from us that her husband's body was dissected in front of a paying audience at the Marriott Hotel in Portland. But he wanted his body to be useful to science. Mrs. Saunders' late husband, David, had registered to donate his body for medical research at Louisiana State University. No, they would not take it because he had died of the COVID. Somehow, his COVID-infected body ended up with MedEd Labs of Las Vegas, a private for-profit body broker. We did not know it was going to be used for a pain audience. Uh, we don't do that. We don't, we've never done anything like that, ever. Abtin Nasiri of MedEd Labs said the organizer of the event lied to his company about why it wanted to purchase Mr. Saunders' body. We do not engage the donor's bodies in any kind of shows that it was involved with. 
we, we don't do anything like that. Mortuary science, alternative burial, or really anything having to do with death. A simple web search would have told MedEd Labs that the body buyer, DeathScience.org, is run by Jeremy Siliberto, who has no professional credentials. It was Siliberto who brought the Portland Body Show to life and had planned one for Seattle as well on Halloween Day. Can you guarantee they had knowledge that he knew that his body would be used in this way? I can guarantee that he knew his body would be used for um, medical education. Siliberto said it was up to MedEd Labs to obtain consent, which clearly did not happen in Portland, and which Elsie Saunders says should never happen again. For other people as well, because, you know, you're totally helpless when you don't know what's happened. And I didn't. I had no idea what happened until you communicated with me. Uh, my dad was a World War II veteran, uh, land of Iwo Jima at 19 in the Marine Corps. Spent 33 years. District Attorney Hiller Moore was disturbed, like many people, that the body of a man who served his country in two wars ended up here. This is somebody that donated their body to science. David Saunders was autopsied in front of ticket buyers at the Oddities and Curiosity Expo in Portland last month. After seeing our story, the DA is now investigating. And I'd like to see what potential criminal violations, if any, uh, that they have for this or if there aren't any, is there any potential legislation to stop this from happening? He's reaching out to authorities in Portland and Las Vegas, where a company called MedEd Labs is based. MedEd accepts donations of bodies with the promise that they will be used for scientific and medical research. D.A. Moore says using the body for a public spectacle may violate the contract it signed with Mr. Saunders' widow. It's called a gift, which is his body. It's made for professional medical science not for people to come ghoul around and look and just get experience to put your hands on somebody's body part for $500. Hope I inspired the audience to, you know, uh, step out of their death denial, out of their death anxiety. Med Ed sold the body to organizer Jeremy Siliberto for more than $10,000. Siliberto wouldn't tell us exactly how much. In a press release today, MedEd said he deceived us repeatedly, stating the body would be dissected before academic students, paramedics, and personnel within forensic pathology fields. And she surely never expected this when she donated this gift of his body uh, to science for him to be displayed this way, for her never to know about it, and for it to be done for money. Uh, just distasteful. This is the state, Louisiana, where 98-year-old David Saunders lived out his life after serving in World War II and the Korean War. His family want answers, but first they want to be sure that the body flown in over the weekend is actually his. We're glad he's home and we, we look forward to, you know, a proper burial, a cremation and a memorial service so we can honor this man's life. His earthly remains are back in Louisiana, a flag-draped casket arriving at the New Orleans airport on Saturday, as seen in these photos by the Advocate newspaper of Baton Rouge. But with everything that has transpired, to be honest, uh, there was, we just wanted to make sure it was him, because there's really no guarantee of that. But is it actually 98-year-old David Saunders? The job of making certain fell to his grandnephew, Harold Adkins, who viewed and positively identified the body at the mortuary this morning. To see a loved one, I wouldn't say dismembered, but butchered in that context from every part of the body, it's just, it, it, it sickens me. This is somebody that donated their body to science. After a life of service, Mr. Saunders wanted to make one last contribution to his country in the name of science and medicine. And then when he died, he wanted to give his body, his life again to help. I mean, that's that's a true patriot. Instead, he ended up in front of a live audience who paid up to $500 to view his autopsy in a Portland hotel, a story the King 5 investigators first reported last month. And the fact that there were people who walked up touched him, touched the body, what have you. Mr. Saunders had long intended for Louisiana State University to accept his body. When it declined because he died in August from COVID, church funeral services sent his remains to a body broker with the family's permission, according to owner Greg Clark. My understanding was it was for uh, universities. It was that they would uh, supply universities with uh, cadavers for them to 
be able to do training and education, you know, doctors and uh, pathologists and stuff like that. MedEd Labs of Las Vegas sold the body to organizers of the Portland autopsy. They also planned one for Seattle, which was canceled. Church Funeral says it has cut ties with MedEd Labs. If this one situation, if all of this goes through and this stops this from ever happening again, I'm sorry that Mr. Saunders had to make another sacrifice for this country, uh, but this should never happen again. And that's what Mr. Saunders' 92-year-old widow, Elsie, wants as well. And that's Elsie's message. She doesn't want this to happen to anybody else. Here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this summer, MedEd Labs was on the hunt to find a local funeral home to help procure human bodies. Originally, MedEd contacted us directly because they were looking for a funeral home in the area that could handle their needs. MedEd struck a business arrangement with Church Funeral Services, a longtime mortuary in Baton Rouge. MedEd would pay Church to process and prepare bodies, according to church owner Greg Clark. They're paying us to do the removal to do a pickup, um, they're, they're paying us for storage. Through its website and relationships with funeral homes, MedEd solicits bodies purportedly for scientific and medical research. Donors are cremated for free afterwards, and next of kin avoid the costs of a funeral, burial, and death certificate. So when you do a, a body donation, then uh, there is death certificates and you can uh, you know, eventually get the cremains back. Uh, do a memorial service. There's a little known industry nationwide of for-profit body brokers, including MedEd Labs. People will say, well, why, why does anybody need a human body? MedEd's Optine Nasiri says there's no substitute for an actual human cadaver. We provide our services for medical institutions, for surgical institutions, for medical device company, medical implant companies. We Paramedics. So when 98-year-old World War II veteran David Saunders died in Baton Rouge in August, his last act of service was donating his body to MedEd through church funeral services. How did you find out that something else different entirely had happened to Mr. Saunders? Do a report. Uh, one of my directors actually happened to uh, uh, see the initial report. I love it. The anatomy is great. I'm really interested in the death sciences. Last month, we revealed that Mr. Saunders was autopsied in front of a Portland audience that paid anywhere from $250 to $500 for a front row seat. A planned Seattle autopsy show was later canceled by organizer Jeremy Siliberto, who purchased Mr. Saunders' body from MedEd Labs. You're saying that Jeremy Siliberto flat out lied to you about what he was doing with this body? Yeah, we had no knowledge at all. Imagine learning from a real human cadaver. An internet search would have revealed that Siliberto and his organization, DeathScience.org, have no professional credentials. A search also reveals something about the man who signs his emails, Dr. Abtin Nasiri. The Nevada State Board of Chiropractic Physicians lists his license as revoked. Are you actually a doctor? I am, yes. I don't practice anymore. I haven't practiced in many years. The revocation a decade ago parallels a $3.5 million civil judgment in which Nasiri was accused of fraudulent insurance billing. He denies wrongdoing. Our attorney did not represent us at trial at all and they didn't show our side of the story. They didn't have any witnesses, no experts, uh, no exhibits or anything like that. Over the weekend, MedEd paid for a flight to return Mr. Saunders' remains to his family in Baton Rouge. His great nephew, Baton Rouge attorney Harold Adkins, says the family is weighing legal options. I'll say this, I, I wouldn't put anything off the table. Okay, we'll follow you guys, okay? This is the day that a couple gathering firewood in a remote area outside Prescott, Arizona, will not forget. Did you touch anything? Oh, hell no. How close did you get to it? Uh, probably eight or nine feet. Okay, so stop wherever you stopped I before, okay? The truck right here. Okay. The Yavapai County Sheriff's Office blurred this body cam video. Oh, is get that him. an arm? Yes, yeah, it's the right arm. Investigators eventually recovered 24 scattered human body parts during a search of the area on the day after Christmas 2020. I'm not saying it's a murder, I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? Um, bodies usually don't yeah, scape. I'm board. not saying what happened, so. <laughs> that's the thing, though. There's toilet paper on the arm. That's freaking weird. The toilet paper turned out to be medical gauze, the first clue that these body parts were used for research purposes. The next day. I crossed this, and I thought, oh, it's just somebody dumping trash because there's 
It's everywhere. 20 miles away, hunters found more. Five human heads, some wrapped in medical gauze, plus the label of a Seattle company, Future Gen X. Just who were the people left to rot in this Arizona desert? And how did they get here? Investigators eventually pieced together a trail 1,100 miles long and a story that starts in Seattle. Happy birthday, dear Maudine. Maudine Wilson lived a remarkable 104 years before she died in the Seattle area in October of 2019. I just see a tenderness in her and a wistfulness. Her daughter Marie has nearly a century's worth of photos showing a life well lived. And this is exactly the halfway mark in her life. Oh my gosh, this is my junior year of high school. You can see the joy that's there. That's really genuine. Several months after Maudine died, her family received an alarming call from a Washington State Patrol detective. He wanted to do a DNA test on me so that it could be determined whether any of the remains in Arizona were my mother's. That's when Evans Wilson, Maudine's son, first learned of the bodies in the desert. He called his sister Marie. It was hurtful to think that she would be treated that way, not only her, but anyone else. And I thought it was disgusting. How could anybody disrespect anyone else's body or anyone else's loved one like that? Here's the backstory. Maudine's family had tried to donate her body to the University of Washington Medical School where she once worked. The UW rejected that donation, but... They gave us the name of Walter Mitchell with Future Gen X. Walter Mitchell ran a for-profit company called Future Gen X. It solicited bodies, a middleman for companies that need them for medical education and research, until Future Gen X folded sometime in 2020. Mitchell headed to Arizona with some of his specimens in coolers, according to police reports. And apparently the, the dump was pretty sloppy. He left uh, bags with uh, printed material that tied these remains back to his company. And how could this happen to my mom um, when we trusted them with her? He got a heart valve put in and a pacemaker 10 years before. Other things were starting to go, the liver, the kidney. They were watching everything. Doug Patterson of Camano Island knew that his days of fishing and spending time outdoors and with the family he loved were nearing an end. He said that he really would like to donate his body to science in hopes that that could help someone. So, three years ago... He went to the University of Washington and picked up the paperwork. He registered to donate his body to the University of Washington's medical school. When Doug Patterson died about a year later from heart failure, family members called the UW's Willed Body Hotline as instructed. Ex-wife Cheryl Patterson says the program abruptly rejected Doug's corpse because of his numerous medical conditions. They couldn't take him and um, they recommend this other place. This other place was Future Gen X, a for-profit company that supplies cadavers mostly to private medical training and educational firms. The family thought Doug's wishes to contribute his remains to science and medicine had been honored until the state patrol came calling last year. They had found remains in the desert in Arizona in two separate places. It made me very angry, very, very angry. A DNA test ID'd her ex-husband, Doug Patterson of Camano Island, among the remains. To have them treated like that is just, uh, it, it makes me sick. To treat the human remains so cavalierly, and I think that this is the most hard to imagine part of this entire situation. They are not alone. There are at least 13 families in Washington state whose loved ones, donors, may be victims, according to the documents we've compiled through public records requests. Several relatives have given DNA samples to authorities to see if there's a match, the only way to positively identify the remains found in the desert. Investigators arrested owner Walter Mitchell, accusing him of driving from Seattle with several bodies in a U-Haul trailer before dumping them in the desert. This is CR 2021-00015, State of Arizona versus Walter Harold Mitchell III. In a Prescott, Arizona court, Walter Mitchell faced the prospect of serious jail time. 
Your Honor, the defendant is charged with 29 counts in this case of abandonment or concealment of a dead body. The maximum prison sentence if convicted. That would be 22 and a half years. Okay, that's the worst case scenario. Should you proceed to trial and lose on all the counts? Does that make sense? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. I thought we were going to do a change of plea today. What are we doing today, Mr. Daniels? Apologies, Judge, for any miscommunication. Mitchell pleaded not guilty in Arizona to 29 counts of abandoning a dead body, the latest case of bad behavior by a body broker. Hosting an event in a pay-per-view manner is completely immoral and unethical. This happens in America, not in a third world country, but that in America, people are able to get donated bodies, cut them up, and sell them off a price list often on the black market. David Tassell is a Denver attorney whose firm won a $58 million judgment against Biological Resource Center in Phoenix. Evidence photos show donated cadavers in body bags that were dissected and packaged in freezers. Jurors found the company lied to donors and mishandled body parts, evidence uncovered in an FBI raid. They found a large male torso with a small woman's head sewn on top of it. Uh, as if it was mocking, you know, what, what, what they were doing. Similar stories about body brokers in Detroit, Tennessee, and Colorado expose an unregulated industry open to anyone. It's not regulated. The person who ran this facility was a man named Stephen Gore. He only had a high school education. He didn't need a license. <laughs> Recently, the DNA test revealed that Maudine Wilson's remains were not among those in the Arizona desert. It wasn't a match and that my mother was not part of the uh, remains that were discovered in the desert. But the King Five investigators have spoken with three donors' families, two from the Puget Sound area and one from Moses Lake, who confirmed their loved ones were among the remains. And all the families, like Maudine Wilson's, are left to wonder about the cremated remains that Mitchell returned to them. If they mishandled these other parts of this process, then am I assured that this is my mom or all my mom? Three body parts are from still unidentified victims, according to the latest police records, meaning the mystery in the desert is not solved yet. You might call this commercial area toward the south end of Phoenix, Arizona, the Cadaver District. This is home to at least four companies that want your body after you die. One of them is Research for Life. Are you a body broker? I find it one of the most offensive terms. It degrades and diminishes what every donor has done, and that's to donate their body for the benefit of humanity. Body brokers do not operate at this level. That, that's just the, the, the bottom line. Owner Garland Shreves wants to show that not all companies that solicit whole body donations, as the trade is known, are the same. A warning, he's taking us on a tour that is not for the faint of heart. Donors will actually come through this door here. It's donors or their next of kin typically sign up with Research for Life before they die. Within hours of their death, the company transports them here. This here is a body cooler. Those are all cadavers that are donated for medical education research purposes. This is where they start the journey through the process. And this is the uh, procurement area space. Procurement room. Yes. So what does that mean? What will happen is once it's determined what the cut plan will be, they'll actually start to dissect. That is actually a chisel, if you see that right chisel. there. Chisel? That's a chisel. Mallet to use yep. the chisel? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Tweezers? Yep. Some kind of clamp here? Yep. And this is a bone saw right that here? That is correct. In the procurement room, there's no escaping the reality of this business, which makes money selling human bodies in parts. This would actually fold down underneath the table like this, and there could be a donor in there. There could be a body in this right there, here. There actually could be. This is the place where donated bodies are dissected, cut apart. Shreves knows that's a hard concept for the public to accept. What if you were a neurosurgeon and all you need is a human head to practice your skill set on uh, to become better and you had to waste the entire body? That would be tragic. This is where we actually store tissue. This here is a walk-in freezer where anatomical specimens are stored. These are body parts, basically. They're all body parts. This is a human body from the head yes. down, to, to, the, right down to the legs. That's right, middle of the leg. Why would somebody want the whole torso and part of the legs? Uh, because they may be doing a spinal course where they're teaching a neurosurgeon 
uh, how to repair something with the spine. You brought us in here because you wanted people to see the reality of the business. Exactly. It's kind of shocking to people that a human body is cut and stored yep. like it might be in a meat freezer. But the reality is, where would you store a body part rather than let it go bad and not be able to be used? This is a reality. If it makes you uncomfortable, then maybe being a donor isn't right for you. Uh, we call this the tr a training room. It's a training lab. But it's the final stop on the tour. It's, it's a bioskills facility. That Shreve's hopes will persuade potential donors. This is how you improve medicine. It's where doctors and surgeons practice on real body parts to learn new medical procedures or tools before they use them on the living. And that's what whole body donation is doing. It's helping people to have uh, a better quality of life, live longer. You know, these people tell a good story. Uh, they've duped a lot of families across this country uh, by pulling on their heartstrings. Bryant Hightower of the National Funeral Directors Association says his 20,000 members have seen enough donor deception that they pushed for this bill in Congress. It would require whole body donation companies to register with the feds and to properly label and track each body part. Because there's a lack of federal regulation, once problem crops up somewhere, these bad operators simply fold their tents and move across the state line. Uh, and opened up shop again, and many times under a different name. We already have laws on the books. It's called fraud. Legitimate donation companies say prosecutors could use existing laws to charge body brokers that deceive donors. They're fighting more regulation in an industry that uses the dead to save the living. We have the medicine we do today because of donors. That's a fact.